Okay, my friends, welcome back. This is Miss Stewart, and she's going to read the next two chapters in front desk. We are almost done. So please make sure you go get a pencil and a sheet of paper and doodle or draw while I'm reading. Here we go. No, I said, shaking my head firmly. Just as once my dad said, we're so close. Dad, you saw what happened to Uncle Ming. The memory of his black eye and the bruises on his neck where the lone sharks grabbed him and ripped through me. I know, but this is different. You said it yourself. This is a huge opportunity. I looked up at my dad. I had never seen so much determination and hope in his eyes. We're this close, he said, holding up his fingers. My mom put her hand over mine. Just this once, she repeated. We'll pay them right back. Just this one. You think she's gonna give in? You think they're gonna give the money to the loan sharks? Hour after terrifying hour, I sat and waited at the front desk. The loan sharks were coming. I pictured hammerheads swimming up to the front desk, glaring at us from the sides of their heads. They pulled into the motel in a black Cadillac Duval. Three big Chinese guys stepped out. They were all wearing leather jackets. One of them had a tattoo on the word on his arm, which meant to suffer. Another had a big tear in his ear, like someone had ripped out his earring. And the third, the boss of the group, had oily skin and long stringy hair, which he wore in a ponytail. There was a great big bulge in his jacket, and I swallowed hard as I stepped through the bulletproof glass door. You understand for amount this large, we're going to need some collateral, the oily boss of the low shark said to my dad. The three of them sat on the small sofa in our living room. With a trembling hand, my mom poured them the last of our jasmine tea. Yes, my dad said, that makes sense. What do you need? Passport, ID, he said. I felt myself go cold. But, uncle, I reminded my dad. My dad put a finger to his mouth. Not now. It'll be returned to you, of course, when you pay us back, the oily boss said. His voice lingered. But if you don't pay us back the $50,000 plus another 20000 on top, well then... The boss glanced at his associates. His associates stretched out their hands and cracked their knuckles. With every crack, fear jolted down my spine. Chapter 66 do you think they're going to go ahead with it and borrow the money? The loan sharks just said that they would give them the $50,000 they need, but they need to pay back $70,000. I wonder what's going to happen. It was decided that the next afternoon, the loan sharks would come back with the $50,000 and my parents would hand over our passports and IDs. I walked to school with nails in my stomach. That means she's really nervous. It was the last day of school. As we all cleaned out our desks and counted down to last hour, Jason walked up to me. That kind of makes me sad. I don't know the next time I'll be able to see you friends back in the classroom, but hopefully soon. I'd love to be able to finish out the year with you guys. Hey, he said. In his hand, he was holding a pencil. It was my sparkly green pencil. Been meaning to give this back to you, he said, handing the pencil to me. I looked down at the pencil in my hands. I expected it to be a super short and beat up by now. I had had visions of Jason's dog chewing on it, Jason stabbing things at home with it, wearing it down to a nub. But it was exactly the same length as before and exactly as beautiful and sparkly as ever. Thank you, I said. This means a lot to me. I hugged my pencil in my hands. I'm sure you'll write great things with it, he added. I looked up at him, surprised. Like the piece you wrote about coming to America? The smile stretched across my face. Thanks, I said. Jason looked down at the floor. I'm sorry I made your year so miserable, he said softly. It's okay, I said. I'm sorry too, for, you know. I could see in his eyes they did not need to remind him about the time in the auditorium. He probably remembered every day. Here, I have something for you too, I said. I reached deep into my backpack and pulled out the thank you letter I'd been meaning to give him. I'd been carrying it around in my backpack for months. Jason looked down at the note surprised. He smiled at his, 
he smiled as he read my words. As I turned to leave, Jason reached out and touched my arm. What, I said. He's bluffing. There's no other buyer. It's just you guys. He'll take a lot less for the motel. I stared at Jason. His brown eyes blazed with courage, but it was his kindness that blew me away. When the school bell rang, I ran. That's it, my friends. One more chapter to go. What do you think is going to happen? Now that Mia knows that, that Mr. Yao was bluffing the whole time, what do you think she's going to do? Is she going to run home and tell her parents to stop? Is it too late? Did they already borrow the money? Will the loan sharks allow them to not take it? Will Mr. Yao finally give in and realize that he doesn't have another buyer? What's going to happen in chapter 67, the last chapter?